Praise the Lord. Thank God for another opportunity to share God's word. Thank God for another day. I like to always say this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Again, I thank God for your presence. You know, <clears throat> been talking about prayer. You know, when you think about prayer, it's a lot. And I know that I've been talking about prayer for a number of weeks, but I want to make sure that when I finish with this particular lesson on praying or prayer, um, that you will know beyond any doubt that when you enter into God's presence, how to enter his presence, that you have such a level of confidence to know that, praise God, when you're praying that God hears you. And then the scriptures say, if you know that he hears you, you know that we have the request that we have made of him. And so, again, uh, you never can talk enough about praying because, well, again, when you look at it, that's that's means of communicating with Almighty God. And so that's a, the source that we have in, as far as communicating with God the Father. And it's through prayer. And again, just remember, prayer is a right now. Prayer is a, what's going on in my spirit. Prayer is what I'm thinking. Prayer is what I'm feeling. And so prayer is what I want to express to Almighty God. Praise God. Father, we come this day to say thank you. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love and kindness. We thank you most of all for Jesus. Father, we thank you for allowing your word to go forth in power and might, Lord. And we thank you for the healing, the deliverance that's going to happen in the lives of your people. I thank you right now for allowing me to share your word. And I pray as I share it, that it's shared in a manner that will honor and glorify you first of all, and then bless your people. And so in advance, I want to say thank you. I love you. I bless you. I honor you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God again as I <clears throat> look back at, uh, you know, what I've been sharing as it relates to to uh, prayer. I started out with a time to pray. I started out with attitude for praying, the key to answer prayer. And then uh, last week's lesson is no formula to praying. And so right now, you should be where I am after uh, uh, these particular lessons. And you know what that is? I'm praying. In other words, I now have a, a level of confidence to, to know that because of where I am in my walk, because of my relationship with Almighty God through His Son, Jesus, I am now praying. I'm now praying, and I know that I don't have to uh, be on my knees. I can be standing. I can be sitting. I can be laying out. I can be running and praying. I, I recognize all these things. also recognize from the previous lessons that I just need to have the right attitude. I can't go before Almighty God with a level of unforgiveness in my heart. I must be forgiving others. I even as a as a husband, I recognize that there's a certain way that my wife should be treated in order that my prayers not be hindered. And then uh, again, last week's lesson is there's no particular formula. And so when you look at that, it's not a matter of words. It's a matter of the heart. So it's not all about. Uh, the words you come up with, but it's all about the condition of one's heart. It's one, the condition of one's uh, a state of mind, the condition of one's spirit as they enter into the presence of Almighty God. And so I say, I'm praying and I'm praying that that's what you're saying right now. I'm praying. And yes, I now understand most of all how to pray. I now understand that prayer is important in my life. I now understand that this is means of communicating with Almighty God. I want to open with uh, uh, some scripture, praise God, and, and maybe some scripture that you've heard throughout uh, uh, these particular lessons that I've shared with you. But what I'm doing right now is I kind of recap, as I kind of uh, bring this thing in, I want you to be able to grab hold to some scripture that's going to keep you with such a level of confidence as you continue to go before Almighty God in prayer. And you can say with all power, might, authority, whatever other words you might want to use, that I am praying. Praise God. Uh, Matthew's uh, chapter 21, verse uh, 22, and this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He says, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. And so when you think about that is what he's saying is it's the attitude, it's the relationship that one has with Jesus Christ will determine uh, whether or not your prayers will be answered. It's a level of, of faith. It's a level of, of hope. And I'm not talking about a hope 
uh, like a, a wishful kind of thinking. I'm talking about uh, hope. I'm talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, a level of expectation. In other words, the hope that you and I have in, in, in Christ Jesus is a, is a level of expectation. We're expecting to praise God, spend all eternity with Almighty God. We're expecting, praise God, to be able to, to, to live and, and, and walk according to God's word. And one thing about that level of hope, we, we know, praise God, because we have the, the same spirit operating on the inside of every born-again believer, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And so when you start talking about that type of hope, you know that is a level of expectation. That's not a wishful kind of thinking, praise God. I made myself a note here to say, be persistent and consistent. In other words, don't just stop. I think about the scripture when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane and the scripture talks about how not once, not twice, but three times that he went before the father. But when it was all said and done, what Jesus said was nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And so that was the persistent prayer. And he was consistent in his prayer time. And that's what we have to do. We have to continue to go. Praise God is not such a thing as, and some people will tell you, oh, you don't have to keep praying about that. You don't have to, you already said it. Sometime you must be persistent in your prayer time and consistent. In other words, to be consistent means that you're, you're, you're always praying. You, you know that you need to pray. Praise God. It's, it's who you are. It's, it's a part of uh, your daily, daily uh, walk. I don't even want to call it a, a routine, but it's a part of who you are because of your relationship. Praise God. Luke 11, 9 and 10, it says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who acts receives, and he who seeks find, and to him who knocks, it will be open. And so what I was looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, at, at, in reading Luke chapter 11, verses 9 and 10, I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who acts receives, and to him who seeks, he finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. So I'm talking about a, a, a bold prayer. I'm talking about uh, persistence. I'm talking about a shameless boldness. In other words, you know, sometimes you can be uh, 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 shame, shame faced to, to go and, and do certain things, but <clears throat> with God and, and when we look at prayer, it's got to be a, a shameless boldness. In other words, I'm confident in, in my relationship with Almighty God. I I know in my heart of hearts not to say that I'm, 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 I'm picture perfect or I get it all right. However, I'm, I'm quick to repent and I know that, praise God, I can go before Almighty God. Because see what happens a lot of time. Whenever one attempts to, to go to God in prayer, the first thing that the enemy does is he brings about some guilt. He brings about something to make you feel shameful. He brings about something that makes you uh, uh, not want to go to God in prayer, makes you uh, believe that you're unworthy. Now, think about it this way. Praise God. We are worthy. And the reason why we're worthy to enter into the presence of Almighty God is because of the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for the sins of mankind. So that's what makes us worthy. Praise God. So when you go, you go uh, again, as the word says, uh, for everyone who acts receives, glory to God, and he who seek finds, praise God, and to him who knocks, it will be open. In other words, the scripture talks about going before Almighty God take those particular concerns to God. The problem is a lot of times is um, we like to uh, possibly pick and choose what we think that God is is uh, is capable of, of, of working with or that we want to just allow him to work with. Yes, I said we allow him because we pick and choose. And what happens a lot of times is, is then after things get get all messed up, all jacked up, all beat down, all knocked down. Then we want to go to God and say, well, well, God, where are you when there's nothing too small or nothing too big for God? And so there's a song that says, take it to the Lord in 
prayer. So no matter what it is, no matter what it looks like, no matter what you feel like, most of all, no matter what you think you can do about it, praise God, give it to God. Let God have it. Praise God. Glory to God. John chapter 15, uh, excuse me, verse uh, number seven. It says, <clears throat> if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now, listen to this. I'm going to reread it one more time. If you abide in me, Jesus says that if you live in him, praise God, and my words abide in you, and his word is in you, his word is in you and I, praise God, he says, and you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Now, this is what I like, even in when we look at the scripture, the scripture in in Psalms 37, 4, it says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Delight oneself, being in Christ, living for Christ, living, praise God, according to what his word says. That's delighting ourselves in him, praise God. And the scripture says, and he shall give you, give you and I, the desires of our heart. So we go back here to John chapter 15, verse number seven. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now, what I want you to understand, that does not mean that everything you go to God and ask for, you're going to get. What I begin to learn and understand, we will receive what is spiritually beneficial for us. So in other words, there's times, praise God, that we're praying and that prayer may not be in accordance to his will because the scripture says that if we pray according to his will, we can know his will, praise God. We can live according to his will. We can pray according to his will. However, what you must understand is after you've prayed, you will receive what is spiritually beneficial for you. In other words, because of your relationship with Almighty God, through his son, Jesus Christ, through the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit, you will receive what is beneficial for you. In other words, God knows exactly what you need. God knows exactly what you desire. And as long as your needs, your wants, your desires line up with his will, those prayers will be answered. And you, in fact, will get what you desire. And the scripture says it will be done for you. Just remember one thing. It's all about our relationship with God the Father through Jesus the Son, through the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. <clears throat> Excuse me. James 1 verses 5 through 8, it reads, it says, and if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now, here I believe is, is a very, very, very uh, important few verses of scripture because when you look at this word wisdom, praise God, wisdom is, is how we operate. See, a lot of times you can have a lot of knowledge, praise God. There's a lot of people who's knowledgeable, but they're not wise. Wisdom, praise God, makes you wise. And so what you want to do is you want to pray for the wisdom of God so that you can understand and walk in the knowledge that's been given to you. Praise God. And so I like here because this is a prayer that I think that we all should be praying. And here is what God is saying about that prayer. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But here's the key. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. 
For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. When you think about that, if you've ever uh, been around the water and when the winds are, are high, it just the waves could go all kinds of different ways. In other words, the wind dictates exactly where those waves are going. And what the scripture is saying here, that if we uh, enter into our prayer uh, uh, with, with, with doubt and, and not in faith, we're just like that that wave of the sea, and, and we're driven by the wind, praise God. <clears throat> and it says that we're tossed. In other words, we back and forth. In other words, there's no stability there. We're not, we're not stable. We're not where we need to be because we're being tossed, because we're not uh, anchored. Our faith is not anchored in, uh, uh, in God. He says, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. In other words, when you go before Almighty God with that type of attitude, not being, have not having your faith anchored in Christ, uh, come already doubting the prayer before you even uh, take the prayer to God. He says that don't expect to receive anything. Praise God. You can't expect to receive anything from the Lord. He says, because you're a double-minded man and unstable. So again, I was talking about stability. I was talking about our relationship. I was talking about who we are in Christ. And because of who we are in Christ, praise God, we can go to the Father, glory to God, uh, not doubting. We can go to God uh, with faith. We can go to God believing, praise God, that our prayers will be answered and we won't be uh, like the, the, the waves of the sea that's driven by the wind. In other words, because something's happening over here or, or something's happening over there and I go to Almighty God in prayer, those things just have me tossing back and forth. They have me doubting God. They have me doubting that he's going to answer my prayer. They have me doubting that God is even with me, even though the scripture says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But because of, of, of what's going on, praise God, because of the winds, because of the pressures, because of this, because of that, I'm driven back and forth. And so I'm not stable. And so not being stable, that level of doubt comes up. And if that level of doubt comes up, I go on and I read, it says, well, let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Praise God. Now, as I was looking at praying, and we pray in the name of Jesus. And the reason why I want you to really uh, pay close attention is I want to put some real serious emphasis on this. We pray in the name of Jesus. Why? Uh, okay. Because of the relationship that we have uh, to the Father from the Son, who is Jesus. And Jesus, in fact, is our high priest. I, I want to read from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. And the word of God reads, it says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in a time of need. Now, first of all, I want to say this. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Now, I go here, and we're talking about a high priest. Praise God. This is why Jesus is who he is. This is why we're praying in the name of Jesus because of the authority of the high priest. Praise God. The son of God. But here's the whole key. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Jesus can relate to you and I. Jesus, praise God, as the scripture says, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. In other words, he can relate to you and I because when he walked this earth, he was tempted, as the scriptures say, in all points. However, he did not sin. In other words, he didn't yield 
to the temptation. Praise God. So then we go down. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So when you look at it from this particular perspective, what we have is Jesus who can relate to us. You know, even when we uh, look at the scripture, scripture says that, that Jesus is going to judge us, praise God. And when I think about that, I, I, I kind of smile because the fact that he can relate, he can sympathize with everything that you and I uh, can, will, do, have gone through, praise God, he can relate to those things. And so when we stand there at the throne of grace, praise God, uh, we can't say, because if it was God, you could possibly say this, well, God, <clears throat> how, you, you're God. How, how could you relate to me? You, you, you couldn't even begin to imagine what I've gone through. You couldn't begin to imagine what I've done. And, and, but with Jesus, you won't be able to say that because what you will understand is, and this is why Hebrews chapter four, verses 14 through 16 is very important. And so Hebrews 4, 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. So he can relate. And that's why we take it to him in prayer. That's why, praise God, when our relationship lines up, the way it's supposed to line up, we go directly to the Father because of the Son who is, in fact, the high priest. Praise God. John chapter 17, verses 1 through 26 uh, and, and, and when you have opportunity, please read that. Let's, let's call it possibly a homework assignment for the week, because in John chapter 17, verses one through 26, the scripture talks about, first of all, how Jesus prayed for himself. Then as we go on, it speaks about how Jesus prayed for the disciples. And then we go on, it speaks about how Jesus prayed for all believers. And so I would encourage you to take some time out to go and read John chapter 17, verses 1 through 26. And there you can understand how important uh, uh, prayer is, how important prayer was even to Jesus as he first of all prayed for himself. Second, he prayed for his disciples. And thirdly, he prayed for all believers. That means you and I. Praise God. Psalms 34 and 7, and I quoted this a little bit early on. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. In other words, when you are where you are supposed to be, praise God, and your walk lines up and your prayers line up with God's will, he will even give us the desires of our heart. Here's a couple of verses of scripture as I... <clears throat> look to uh, the near end of this broadcast. And, and, and this one in particular is, is one that I believe that we really, really, really must pay close attention to. And uh, again, I told you some of these verses of scripture that I'm, I'm reading today has been throughout this particular lesson, but here is one that definitely uh, must enter on the inside of every born again believer. First John three twenty two, and the word of God, it reads, it says, and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So here again, whatever uh, 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 specific prayer that's being prayed, whatever request is being made, when it lines up with God's will, praise God, it says, and whatever we ask, we receive. Whatever you and I ask, we receive it. And the reason why we receive it is because, listen, we keep his commandments. We are obedient to his word. Glory to God. I'm not telling you that you're picture perfect. I'm not telling you that you won't make a mistake. I'm not telling you that you can't make a mistake because there was only one perfect person, and that was Jesus. And remember, we read from Hebrews 4, 15, right? Praise God, for we do not have a high priest 
who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So again, we're talking about that one perfect person. So I'm not telling you that you are perfect. I'm not telling you that I'm perfect because we are not, we can't be perfect. Praise God. However, what we must understand here is we must have a desire to keep God's word. If and when you or I sin, we must be quick to repent. The scripture, 1 John 1, 9 says he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all un righteousness. Praise God. So that's why we can look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, and I will read it again. And whatever we ask, we receive from him. Why? Because we keep his commandments and, 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 watch this, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And that means that, praise God, because see, you can call yourself keeping his commandments because you have a, 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 a very religious perspective on life and yet not be doing the things that really are pleasing to God. What you say? Yes, because um, you you think because you uh, you pray a certain time of the day, you do this a certain time of the day, you read your Bible a certain time of the day, but you're hateful. You, you understand what I'm saying? You you hate your brother. You hate your sister. You, you, you dislike this. You dislike that. You're always complaining about this. You're always complaining about that. And those things do you think are pleasing in his sight? And so, again, it's conditioned on us living, you and I, I say us, it's conditioned on you and I living according to his word and then, in fact, doing those things which are pleasing in his sight. Because, again, you can, again, you can follow his word to the T and still not please God. You say, what? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but I'm just so hateful. So I'm following it here, I'm following it there, but I'm hateful, I'm not loving. So somewhere along the line, you, you, you're missing it. Praise God. And here, as I look to close out this particular lesson, John chapter 9, verse number 31. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Now we're talking about our prayer time, right? We're talking about when we're speaking to Almighty God. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears them. In other words, because of our relationship, praise God, because we are born again believers, God hears us. Now, I want to share this uh, to the person of persons who still operating in sin. The one prayer that God wants to hear from you is the sinner's prayer. He wants to hear that prayer of repentance because, and when we talk about hearing, we're talking about getting prayers answered. Praise God. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so you have got to recognize that as a sinner, you cannot in any wise expect your prayers to be answered because you don't have a relationship with the Father, and that relationship only comes because you have accepted the Son as your personal Lord and Savior and are now being led by the Holy Spirit. Praise God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And so today, if you're that person or persons who would like to Praise God, have your prayers and know that your prayers will be heard. Know that your prayers will be answered. You've got to change that lifestyle. You've got to stop sinning. You've got to repent. You've, if, if you're in Christ, you've got to repent. If you're outside of Christ, you've got to get in Christ. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how your word has spoken into our hearts. I thank you that the people are now praying, even as the, the title was, I'm praying. I'm praying with confidence. I'm praying with boldness. I'm praying knowing, praise God, that I have a relationship with the Almighty God. And so, Lord, thank you for that. This day is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. You know, I shared that if you are not, in fact, in the family of God, that God does not hear your prayers. And the one prayer that he wants to be able to answer for you right now is that prayer of repentance. And so if you want to come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I say, repeat this prayer of faith. You say, Father, it's in the precious name of Jesus that I come before you. 
Father, I recognize that Jesus died for the sins of the world. Father, I recognize the day that I am a sinner. Father, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me and through me for the glory of God. Jesus, thank you for coming into my heart. I accept you this day as my personal Lord and Savior. Father, thank you for receiving me into your family. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I say welcome to the family of God. The scripture said the angels in heaven are rejoicing over your conversion. Get a Bible, begin reading St. John chapter 1. Most of all, find that Bible-believing, teaching church and come in and become an active member of God's family. And so until we have opportunity to meet the next time, I ask the Lord's blessings on you and your family. May he keep you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.